it's a pleasure to be here this evening for our second um, show. We have a very special guest this evening. Uh, but first, let me give you some housekeeping uh, tips. Uh, we are going to have some Q&A. We'll be able to answer your questions live. Um, and how you can reach us and let us know what you're, what's on your mind is uh, by contacting us through Twitter. Our uh, call sign is at Royal Alliance 1. We'll also be monitoring our Facebook chat. So if you're on the Royal Alliance Facebook, if, you're, if you've friended us, we'll be able to see you uh, talk to us that way. Also, I'd like to remind you that tomorrow this um, uh, recording will be live as well. And if you haven't already connected to us, the Royal Alliance, through either Twitter, Facebook, or our Google Plus accounts, go ahead and do that. Add us to your circles or friend us or follow us. Um, and we will be able to keep you posted with what's going on in the Royal Alliance. All the Royal Diamonds worldwide are starting to plug into that and communicating to you through that. And uh, you'll be able to be notified of upcoming events such as this event, which is every second Tuesday. Um, I, would, uh, I would like to dedicate tonight's show to a very special friend of mine who recently passed. And um, he will be sadly missed, although I know his spirit is with us and certainly lives within our hearts. Those of us he's touched, uh, Dr. Rob Mason, we will miss you. Um, and in light of the fact that our theme tonight is purpose, I just wanted to mention that I know in times like this, it's often difficult to understand what the purpose is when someone should leave us so soon. But I do know and have faith that there, in fact, is a purpose for this even. And uh, I wouldn't doubt if he's going to be helping me with this show tonight. So... In lieu of that, I'm going to turn our attention now to our special guest and uh, welcome. Well, this is a long time coming. This is um, a dear friend, a colleague, someone I've known pretty much all my Niken career. Um, she's grown to be one of the superstars in Niken. Um, just a, an incredible talent, an amazing person to watch live. Um, hear her speak, hear what she has to talk about. She speaks with a sense of pa purpose and passion like no one I know in Niken. We often jokingly call each other brother and sister, and there's more to that, and maybe we'll get to it tonight. But um, Julie is, without a doubt, one of the brightest stars in Niken, and rightly so, was crowned as the Consultant of the Year in 2012. And I'm so happy to have Julie Tara, Royal Diamond Consultant, on our show this evening. Hi, Julie. Hey Mike, thank you so much for asking me to be on. It's really my pleasure and I'm really excited about tonight's uh, call. Well, Julie, I have something in mind, so I'm going to see if I can figure out how to do this because this is not something I typically do. Um, so give me a second while I figure out how to do this, I believe. I need to... Oh, there, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, we're good to get the bugs out of this. I'm just learning how to use this. But do you remember that day? Yes, I was sitting okay. right there. I, I, just, I wanted to take you back a little bit because this was a very, very, very special moment in time for both of us, actually. And um, this is, of course, last year at the Nikin Convention. We're about a week away from the next convention, and where they'll announce, of course, another consultant of the year. And I just thought I'd take a minute to bring us back to that point in time because it's not very many people who have experienced the, the epoch, if you will, of success in Niken uh, being recognized by your peers and by your closest friends as the consultant of the year. That's, and that's one of my favorite pictures right there. Yeah, that, it were, yeah, it was so sweet. Well, I was sitting right next to you, and I remember when they called my name, and I just said, no, and you said, yes, and I said, no, and you said, yes, and then you lifted me up. <laughs> well, uh, Julie, you didn't say no. You screamed no. <laughs> no! I remember how vivid that was. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm going to just turn this slide off so that it doesn't interfere with, uh, with my signal. Hopefully, you can see me back now. Am I back? Yes, I see you now. Okay. Wow. Um, so go back to that moment. I mean, you didn't even believe it could have been you. Why? I, I, you know, I don't know. I remember when you won it, and I remember you standing there and just tears falling down your face, and I remember all of us crying and being so moved. 
for you. And I remember Reed winning it and different people over the years. And, you know, I don't know. I, I had written it down, not on a life cycle plan. I'd written it down on a piece of paper at some point, you know, a goal, just as a goal, like, <clears throat> wouldn't that be fun? But when it actually happened, it was so overwhelming. And um, it was very strange because the night before I had woken up and heard a voice saying, bow down low to the rainbow. And I didn't understand what that meant. And then when I walked into the Nikon convention, it was all rainbow colors. I don't know if you remember, but it was all rainbow colors. And I thought, that's really funny. I don't remember seeing Nikon do it that way before. And, um, and then, you know, when that happened, I, you know, when I, I, I thought I was going to fall down and faint, actually. I really didn't think I could stand. And um, when I went up and stood on the stage, I really felt the presence of my mother and my father, who both passed on. And th when they gave me that crystal, it just shone rainbow colors. And I just was thinking of that, th that voice that said, you know, bow down low to the rainbow. And I just thought, this really doesn't have anything to do with me. This is something, this is God at work or at play, I should say. This is God at play. This is, this is, this is something, and I felt it all with Nikem from the very beginning. It's, I don't know really how to make it all happen. I try to get out of the way and, and let spirit move. And, and that's what I knew when I was standing there was that that's really was the truth of it was that it, it, that all the, all the glory goes to spirit. And, you know, it, it was, it was very, um, it was very, very, very uh, humbling to stand there um, and, and, and experience all of that. So it's very difficult to put it into words. And I was, uh, and you really, you regained your composure quite quickly too. I remember, um, you know, I, I got to just share with you with, with, for me this moment. Um, you know, you're, I'm a guy who looks for signs and I know you are, and I'm sure we're going to get into that. And, for me, it was really important to see that you were recognized and honored because I truly believe that your dedication and commitment to this company has no question in my mind been the reason why this company has been able to continue to su succeed and, and attract the kind of people that Nikon is attracting, uh, people who are really looking for a deeper meaning in life, a place to put their heart. And I know that there's a lot of people listening tonight who... Um, maybe don't have that connection yet with Nikan. And maybe there are some who've been with Nikan some time and have that con connection. And so while this story tonight is starting on such a high being, you know, this is the epitome of success. This is what it looks like, the view from the top of the mountain. This story is also filled with heartbreak. And if it's, I know it's true for me, and I know it's true for you. Yeah. And, and it's probably important for people to know that um, that's part of the journey and maybe we can go back in time when you're, where you were at in life when Nikan came knocking. Well, I, th I think you're absolutely right. In fact, I think a lot of the, um, the big work that we all do in, in the world as in really giving of our, of our true soul and in service of um, the greater good of all it is it comes out of suffering. So, so very often, almost always, it comes out of suffering. And uh, I see that a lot with people with Nikan. And in my own situation, I mean, I think that suffering happened with my mother, with her mental illness, and then my father being a doctor, not being able to help. And this, just to watch someone you love that much suffer, you know, all her life, that changed my life. And it made me want to help others, you know, so that they wouldn't suffer the way I saw her suffering. So that's what propelled me very early on into into healing, into natural healing work, and that's that's my background. And that's what I you know connect with. And I was told that I was uh, my life was about healing when I was nineteen. So that's when that started. But the suffering, uh, but right before Nikem was that we, we I had had a healing center with my husband um, and another couple, and we had a huge center. It was a beautiful center. It was a, ahead of its time, and um, we were very undercapitalized. So we had a great vision, but we didn't really have the savvy, the business savvy to make it work, and it was in the very early 90s and um, just ahead of its time a little too much, and it went bankrupt, and it was a corporate bankruptcy, not personal, and um, 
However, we did lose everything we had because we'd thrown everything into it with a lot of gusto and passion. And, uh, and I was really scared. Uh, we were three months late in rent and I was afraid and I really prayed. Um, I, really in a way that I never had before. Like I was, oh, maybe I had about my mom for sure. But I, I was just really on my knees saying, I don't know what I'm meant to do in this world. I know it's about healing, but, you know, please show me what I'm meant to do because I've got to be able to pay the rent. I, I need to, you know, support my children. We had three children and, and six altogether with Bill's other three. And uh, it was a very scary time. And I remember the prayer. I remember saying, I'll do whatever you show me just so long as it's true to my heart. If it's true to my heart, I'll do it. And and then Negan came, and and it was so, it was so auspicious. How how long I, how long before that prayer and and Nikan shows up? Very quick, within a few days, a few days, maybe a week. Two I, weeks. I, I, the reason I bring this up is that in my 21 years with Nikan, I can't tell you how many times I've heard that story where people literally get on their hands and knees and pray, and the the number generally is within two weeks they find out about Nikan. Really? Yeah, yeah, I would absolutely, it was no longer than two weeks for sure. That would be the outside, you know, and I, and I remember thinking if I put this prayer out, I better look at everything that comes by. And I didn't want to do network marketing and I didn't believe in magnets either. And I was a healer. So, you know, go figure. You'd think I would have known, but I didn't. And I was pretty arrogant and scared and shut down about it. But I remember thinking I've put this sincere prayer out of a real surrender because what I got was that my ego wasn't that good at making my life work and that I had to somehow get out of the way and, and, and allow something bigger to work through me and with me to co-create with something far greater than my little self. And, and so when I went to that presentation, it was simply because I thought I better be open to, I better be open to something, anything. And that night, Reed was speaking, Reed Nelson, Royal Diamond, and literally this voice said, listen to this man, he is a messenger for you. And I listened in a, in a very different way. I mean, really acute listening and deep listening. When you say this voice, I mean, are we talking about something that you felt in your heart? Are you, are you literally hearing something? I literally heard a voice in, wow. I don't know if it's in my head or in my heart. It's in me. And it okay. said that, listen to this man, he's a messenger for you. And I did, and I did, you know, and I, and I just, I got it. I mean, the products had a profound effect on my back injury that night. Coincidentally, my back was killing me and I put the back flex on my back and it worked. You know, I had a stomach ache. I put it on my stomach and the back flex worked and my tummy ache went away. That was two things. And I heard these stories that were unbelievable. And I said, my gosh, well, I don't know if they're lying or somebody's paying them or what, but there's pretty profound things I'm hearing. And, uh, and then there was Reed, and there was just something in the way he spoke. And it wasn't really the words. It was something else. Some kind of transmission came from him, through him, to me, and I got it. And I, I left in a, in a quick hurry. I ran out, and my head was just on fire. My brain was going, oh my gosh, you know, if these products really work like this and they're safe, and they're non-invasive and they're non-chemical and, and, and they're effective, how, how could I not help people with this? How could I not tell people about this? I, I would have to tell, I mean, it would be my ethical and moral obligation to let people know. And, and see, that's why I didn't want it to work because I didn't want to have that feeling. But of course I had that feeling. When you have a great, you know, when you really realize the products are so incredible and they are life-changing, what are you going to do? Not tell anybody? I mean, that's just... Uh, it's like finding the silver bullet, not telling her. I mean, you just, how, I could not do that, could not not do that. So I took a walk and I said, is this what you are showing me? And I got a direct yes. And I said, if I do it, can I be successful? And the answer was yes. Now, I don't have any experience in business. And I know a lot of people don't have experience in business that start <clears throat> a neat in business. Um, a lot of people in Nikan have never done network marketing before, nor had I. It doesn't matter. It's your passion. It's your love. It's I fell in love with it. You see. Well, Julie, was it a fast rise to through the ranks, or you know, was it a, a quick start and then a you hit a wall? Like what what happened in the early start? 
What happened is um, I went home and I told my family I found something incredible and I was going to change our lives within one year by changing others' lives, by helping others. And I set myself a five-year plan to Royal Diamond. My first initial goal financially was 5000 a month because that's what I needed, I felt, to make, to catch up on everything. And so I set a five-year plan. Royal Diamond was the highest level, so I set the with the end in mind, and then I worked backwards. I just made it up. I just made it up. I said, okay, then I'll be diamond in three years. I'll be platinum in a year and a half. I'll be gold in six months and silver in three months. And I, I just uh, had that little piece of paper by my – I didn't have a desk or anything. I just had it at home. I worked off the kitchen table. I borrowed money to start because I was broke. So I borrowed three and a half thousand dollars from two people. Told them I was going to build a multi-million dollar business and I needed some seed capital. And if they'd like to lend it to me, that'd be great. And I'd pay it back as soon as I could, which I did. I made it back in three months. And I just took this out to everyone I knew and everyone I loved and just said, I don't know if this is for you or not. I really don't, but I'm going to build a multi-million dollar business with this and nobody's got this and everybody needs it. And, uh, I'm looking for, for partners, I'm looking for playmates. I want to have fun, and I want to change the world, and I want us all to make money along the way. So, you know, I just started sponsoring people. I went silver the second month, gold in the 10th month, platinum in the 12th month, diamond in two years and seven months from the beginning, and royal diamond in three years and 10 months from the beginning. So that was the time period. And you've been with Nika now how long? 17 years. Was there ever a time where you felt like quitting? Yes, there were a couple of times that were really, really hard for me. Really hard. Um, one of the things I've loved is that, you know, close friends became, you know, consultants with me. You know, became part of the team, and uh, and I had people leave for different reasons, and I, I felt really hurt and really, uh, really betrayed, and I, I, I wanted to quit. And I do remember, and I was already making incredible income, so it wasn't about that. I just felt so um, abandoned, I think was the word. So I thought about it seriously one night, and I remember going to sleep, and I, I had met Mr. Masuda a couple of times. In fact, I danced with him at a party once, and I, he, I, heard, his, I heard him call my name in the night. It makes me want to cry, because he called my name just Julie. And I realized I couldn't, I couldn't leave, that this was part of my destiny and that it would be, you know, like a slap in the face of God to leave when I, you know, knew that this was what I was supposed to do. And I got up early in the morning and I, you know, I just thought, no, you know, just because other people leave doesn't mean I have to leave. Um, yes, I was hurt. I had to work on my own issues with abandonment because I had a lot of issues with abandonment as a child and so now when it happens again if it happens I, I try to look at how am I abandoning me you know why am I having it reflected in the outer world what am I abandoning in myself that is causing that reflection so that's how I try to work with things like that and not to uh, feel bad or guilty or anything but just to take responsibility that if I'm a co-creator of my existence then then I need to take responsibility and that maybe I'm doing things unconsciously or consciously that is causing that abandonment. Wow. That, I just want to make it oh totally 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 makes sense. I, I just want to make a note for anyone um, who wants to participate in our call, uh, call this evening if you'd like to ask a question of myself or Julie, uh, you can tweet us at Royal Alliance One. Uh, we're also checking the Royal Alliance Facebook chat. If you have something um, that you'd like to share with us, or, or not share with us, but ask uh, of Julie. Um, Julie, Drew, um, I just want to sort of take you back a little bit um, because you and I have really this, just this really remarkable relationship. Um, I know that when I'm going through something tough and I know that when you're going through so something tough and sometimes we don't even know that it's happening to the other but we seem to be doing a lot of it in tandem. You and I seem to be leading parallel lives in a sense. You, you're the, you're the yin and the yang of that experience and, and while people may get the impression that as Royal Diamonds and earning 
lots of money and so forth is you know the epitome of success I I know that that's not what turns you on it's not what turns me on it's certainly necessary and it certainly makes it possible for us to do it the way we love to do it which is to be is to as many places and, and help as many people as possible so it, it enhances our ability to do that but that's not the driving force behind this but I remember when you first met me do you remember that in Japan um, <laughs> We were at a restaurant. I, I don't even remember what it was about, but I just remember, boy, you were looking at me with dagger eyes. What was that about? What happened? How did you hear about me, and why did you hate me? <laughs> I never hated you. I never hated you. We were having, um, I think it was breakfast, and I think Ellen Kendall was with us at that time, and we were talking about metaphysics, and I was talking about metaphysics, and, and um, you were just dis disagreeing very bluntly and 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 you started kind of rapid firing and I started to interject and then you kept going and kept going and then I started to just withdraw because that's kind of how I deal with things I don't like conflict so I withdrew and then I said Mike I said when did why do you do this you're like on the tennis court and you're you're volleying all these balls at me and I've already left the court and you don't even notice that I'm gone <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember that because I remember asking you, when did that first start in your life? And you said, I think I was very little, a little boy, and you started to cry. And then I knew, I knew something really big was being, you know, something big was happening and that you were really realizing something that you had never realized before about that you know that place where we all get defended and defensive and and it, it had come from being little and not being heard and trying to be heard and be heard and it was a very beautiful thing because we somehow both of us cracked open I think and and in that we became really firm friends forever I think Wow you, you, you're bringing tears to my eyes as you're bringing back memories here um, and, and it's true, we have dodged a lot of bullets together, you and I, and we do counsel each other a lot. I want people to know that because I trust you implicitly. I know that um, your heart is always in the right place. And while you and I may disagree at times in certain things, we do respect each other's opinion. And that's one of the things that I think having relationships that you develop in Nikan is so unique because we're tied together through a common sense of purpose. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, I think for people like yourself and I, and there are definitely many others like us, there's a, there is a very, very deep calling that Nikan is not just a business, although it's a wonderful business, and it's not just about products, although the products are absolutely extraordinary, and I, I see, I love it all. I love it all, and I can't wait for the this or that, but I think... I think uh, we knew we were called. I know for myself as a child, I knew that I was supposed to do something that was important in the world. I knew it from very young. And uh, I always was asking the stars, you know, hey, stars, what, what, why am I here? Why did you send me, you know? <clears throat> and so I, I think this calling, it's so much deeper than any kind of logic of of the left brain you know it's it's a it's a very it's even bigger than just a heart feeling because yeah heart is love but this is this is a kind of must uh, I I must flow into this and this is about the people uh, the it's the people in a big sense it's humanity it's it's about humanity not just surviving which they need these products for survival I really believe that given the EMF fields the chemtrails the chemicals in the soils you name it we need these products and these technologies to protect ourselves but it's much bigger than that it's really about well in my in my belief in my version of it is it's it's about really helping people to open their consciousness to rate to rise to a higher level of consciousness to really awaken fully on the planet at this time which so many prophecies talk about this time of awakening you know and the products help us awaken the products themselves <clears throat> help us awaken and <clears throat> the business helps us because it it calls us to help others and to love others and to serve others as as every uh, you know, 
every text, religious text would say, you know, love your brother as yourself. And we learn about that and how to really serve others and, you know, get ourselves out of the way. And it's about people thriving. It's about celebration. It's not just to survive. It's to really thrive. And that's where the five pillars of health is so, is such a core value for you and for me and the humans being more. Uh, if this wasn't about us graduating as a human species to the next level, I don't know if it would always interest me to the level that it does, but it fascinates me on a daily basis because I see people really grow and break through their past conditioning to become fully free, and that's a big, big thing. Now, you and I share that very, very clearly, this ideology and this understanding of what Nikan is as a vehicle, as a tool for both of us and for others to facilitate a process for others like it was for us. Maybe some of us came into this with a little bit more understanding of ourselves and our need to be connected to a purpose, and others have been discovering it along the way. Um, there's And there's obviously events that have taken place. Is there... Is there a specific event that you recall in your Nikan life, uh, maybe even in the early stages, where it was the anchor upon which you have have to re you've reflected back on at times? Yes, actually, um, the third night on the sleep system, which I borrowed from my friend who uh, introduced me to Nikan, <clears throat> I had a very profound dream of the map of. Uh, I, it was actually so cool because. It was the Nikan headquarters, but it was in California, um, and it was a big headquarters, which it didn't even exist at that time. I mean, we had that little teeny office at Wilshire Boulevard, but we didn't have our big... So this was really cool, and it had a room in it with a map of the world, and we were all standing in line in the dream with a little card each, and we put the card in the side of the map, and it would light up with the bulbs, little tiny light bulbs all around the map where your organization was. So each person, it would light up in different places, which I think is a super cool idea, and I really think Nikan should do this uh, for all of us to be fun. Um, and so in the dream, I walked up and put it in, and all, all the, the, the whole map of the world started lighting up with these lights. And I woke up instantly. I woke up, and I sat up, and I said, Wow, uh, are you telling me that this is a way or the way I can help light up the world with other people who want to light up the world, really light up the world. And, and I got such a clear yes on that. I said, now I understand why, why I'm supposed to do this. Now I really understand it deeply. And, you know, I think about it all the time because, because sometimes, you know, you get kind of stuck or I get stuck in little places. This person left or, or something happened or this leg didn't really flower the way you thought it was going to. And, but then I hear someone like I have a, new, a relatively new diamond who just brought 100 people to the Ukraine opening in her business. And she's already got like 12,000 people in her business. And I thought, here's a woman I never knew before. She's several levels below me, not too many levels, which is nice. And she's like, she's lighting up the world and I'm helping her light up the world. And she's brought 100 people to the Ukraine. And I talked to this one guy who said, you know, in Romania, we make about $350 a month. So for one of us to go senior or executive, that's a big deal. And I was just crying on Skype with him going, I can't imagine making $350 a month. Wow. And how do you take care of your family on that? And you see it just, you know, like, it's just so amazing because like like her vision, Karina's, is to help all the women of Eastern Europe to become empowered on every level, not just financially, but financial is a big one. And women need to become empowered financially. They have never been empowered financially unless you were born a queen or a princess or something. You're not, you know, we didn't, you know, we've all struggled with those uh, old, you know, suppression. And so she's up out there doing this. And I'm thinking of that dream. I'm thinking that dream is materializing bit by bit by bit. Today I had a call with a woman and her friend in France for Peru. And we were talking about opening Peru. They're both Peruvian. So one's in America, one's in France. And we're talking about Peru and we're talking about Machu Picchu and going there and, and setting things right in Peru. And we're talking about, they have no good water, no good air. You could, create a huge business just on water and air in Peru. You know, 
these are the things when I think now, you're, that you're, you're, it hasn't just it's not just the people in your organization downline that you're working with you just recently broke a new silver if I'm not mistaken yes I did I did Joe yeah Joe he's gorgeous I love Joe Joe called me I left a message and he was English he didn't know who I was except that he came across sneaking through the emotion code which I suggest to people is fabulous and um, thanks to Dr. Bradley Nelson, who brought that. And a lot of people are coming to Niken from that because they see using magnets to release these trapped emotions. So he had read about it. He went to the headquarters because he lived nearby in Long Beach. And then he saw my picture. And then he looked me up and then he called me. And I called him right back. And he, and, and he laughed because, of course, I'm English and he's English. And we just got on great from the beginning. And I went to visit his family. He, he went silver in the first few weeks before I ever met him. Wow. And then I met, you know, with his wife and his kids, and I stayed with them, and we did presentations in his house, and we went to the Nikon headquarters. And his downline have had some profound experiences with the products. I mean, really big, big deals, you know, like not having to use a wheelchair, stuff like that. Big. Wow. Yeah. And he's just a delight, and he's coming this weekend, and he's going to do Humans Being More with his wife, and I just love them both, and I love their kids, and it's just, it's, it's magic. That's awesome. So, so you're telling me that a royal diamond doesn't retire? Well, personally, I don't know how everybody holds this, but I never thought I would retire in my entire life. I mean, why? I, I retire from what? From life? I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. You know, I don't. I don't want to retire. I I love what I do. I love what I do. I just sponsored a friend of mine in Boulder last week, and I went to see her yesterday. And we sat and talked, and we look at thing, things on the website. And I bumped into her today as I went to pick up a pen and at a shop. And, uh, you know, we just hugged each other. And I just said, I, I am so excited to be able to work with you. I said, it's such an honor. You know, she's such a lovely woman. And she just wasn't ready until now. You know, she'd been married 35 years. Her husband happened to have left, which is very sad. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But right now, she's vulnerable. But she said, you know, he was never that excited about Nikan. But she said, I was always excited about Nikan. And now I want to do it. Now I'm, now I'm ready. Now I'm free and now I want to do it. And I'm like, let's go, girl. You know, let's have some fun and let's help the world. And she's a healer. She's a herbalist. She's very famous. She's, you know. So it, se it seems, Julie, that your, your enthusiasm has, uh, is just over the top. I mean, it's unquestionable that you are drawing people to you through the law of attraction because you are vibrating at such a high frequency. But again, bringing it back to some of the uh, people out there who maybe haven't gotten there yet or are just working their way up to that um, and I know that because you and I have talked there have been times where you and I have second guessed whether or not even Nikan as a company was on the same page as us maybe we see something that they th those who are running the company don't even see themselves and is that okay by the way is it okay if we see something bigger than they do oh I think absolutely I think absolutely so and uh you know, I, I do believe that Mr. Masuda had a, he had quite a revelation when this came. I mean, whatever you call it, I would call it a download of divine information. But I do feel like Niken has a divine contract, uh, a divine mission, a divine covenant with spirit to help this world to heal. And we definitely need healing in this world at this time. There's just no question. Um, as far as, you know, with, with high vibration, I think any anyone who really wants to succeed, I really study people a lot. Like I'm right now studying Tony Robbins, and I'm really fascinated by how he speaks about being in state, being you know, and and really learning how to be empowered every day, how to really manifest your personal power. And I, I think that's what we teach in Niken, and what leaders learn is that they actually do have control over how their their state is. You know, there are some days when I'm, you know, just not in a good mood or I'm sad or I miss my kids. They live all over the world and some days I just miss them. And I don't feel like calling someone about Nikan and I just go take a walk around the lake or I go work out or I do something different. And uh, But I think it's incumbent upon us to to learn to that we have the control of opening up to the highest states and to live from joy and to live from love. 
and to live from peace. And so that's where I aim for. I don't always reach it, just like anybody. Um, I'm a human being, and it can be hard. And, you know, life is full of challenges. But I think this is much bigger than any challenge that, that you know, this is you, much bigger than any You're bringing up something that I think is really worth noting, and mm -hmm. that is um, you're saying that if your challenge, if your, if your purpose in life and your connection to that purpose has greater meaning and greater value to you than any challenge that you may face when you put one up against the other, then you have the means to overcome that challenge and, and to focus on what is your purpose and, and your connection to that purpose and the means by which you, you can live that purpose. Because I know you and I have been challenged in many ways personally on our family level and so forth, but here we are still. You know, The one thing I've been doing the longest is my Nikken business, 21 years consistently. Um, and I did want to ask you something else, and that was, you know, consultant of the year 2012, to me, the sign that I was interested in was that it was 2012, that it was representative of the year that I believe the big, the big changes that are synonymous with the person I know you to be uh, and what you represent are to happen on the planet, to, to, to see these changes within the hearts of man on a mass scale. Um, is what these prophecies are all about and so forth if you've done the homework. Um, but the the consultant of the year is sort of a moment in time, And but you've had quite a career with Nikan, so I'm wondering if there is there been times outside, or is there a, a moment outside of the consultant of the year which you might have as your maybe second most proudest moment? What is that? I don't know even if the word pride... I question about the word even pride, you know, I, I it's more just a sense of alignment and, and a thank you and a gratitude uh, for, for listening and for being in alignment and doing what I was asked to do. It's like more like that than a sense of pride like, uh, you know, cool, you go Julie Tara, you know, it's kind of not like that. If people that know me well know that I really struggle a lot with confidence, self-confidence. I've always struggled with that, you know, because I think I got so shut down as a kid because of so much criticism in my ballet career. So I, I, I learned that one day in the Course in Miracles, I learned that, you know, you don't have to have confidence in yourself. You just have to have confidence in God. <laughs> that really helped me a lot. But I want to try to answer your question. The 2012 well, there's two there's two things well, there. Well, the, the proud a, pr a moment outside of that, and this is a question Bobby's asking. So thanks, Bobby, for the question. A, a proud moment, other than the uh, the Cody Award. Yes, I think that the moment I think the moment that happened was when I was in the cafe and I saw the little boy with um with cerebral palsy, and I <clears throat> I wanted to say something and I was too scared. And then finally I went over and said to his mom, have you ever thought of, you know, using Magnus to help your son? And they came to my house. You know, she lit up actually like a Christmas tree and said, wow, I heard of magnets. I, yeah, I don't know where to get them. And I said, maybe I can help. And they came to the house and literally in about, in about 30 minutes, this boy, I mean, he just transformed. I mean, his feet were warm for the first time ever. His head, he could hold it up. He could, normally he couldn't, and he could hold it up. His hands, from being all curled up, released and opened. He turned to his mom and he smiled. He looked at me first, kind of quizzically, and I knew his brain was perfect. And he turned to his mom and said, it works. It <laughs> works. He said it twice. And she started to cry and she said, God sent you. Now, now that moment was, I, I just started crying, actually. And then what happened subsequently was they, they were completely broke and had no money, and Nikan gave them a wellness home. And the day I got the email that Nikan, because I put them in for that as a request, and they You're talking told about Nikin, the, uh, the wellness home initiative. The wellness home initiative, right. And Nikan gave them a And honestly, being on that phone call, I think that's when I felt, I felt so big. Like, my heart felt so big. I was bawling my eyes out. Pat Elkins was saying to them, you have won a wellness home from Nikan. I mean, Nikan's giving you this king-size bed, everything of Nikan's they gave to the boy. And I just thought, this is good. This is very good. This is yeah. good. 
we have another question. This one's coming from Rima. What's the next five-year goal? Where do you go from being consultant of the year? Oh, that's a great question. My next goal is to be in the top five income earners. And um, I, I have a five to seven year goal on that. And I'm, I'm excited about that. And the reason I'm excited about it is because it's going to mean that I will have affected a lot more lives. And really fundamentally, you know, I just, I, I'm the happiest when I feel like I can just be a blessing for people. And that's what Nikan gives me the privilege to feel that on a daily basis that, that I can be a blessing. And, um, and, and so that's the goal, you know, that's why, because I want, I want to help a lot more. And especially for me, spirit, you know, help people. It's not just physical. It's helping them mentally. It's helping them emotionally. I've seen so much mental illness. I see children suffering everywhere. I see children on drugs all the time. It's just tearing my heart out how sick our cult, our world has become not just our culture our world has become and i i you know what i'm all about it i am all about it health reform we have to move into prevention we can help people to be happy they use these products and they feel happy now that's scientifically proved that's not just some crazy idea you feel happier more positive more mentally focused, more physically strong and buoyant when you're on these technologies. I want everyone to have that. I want every kid off, off those crazy drugs because those drugs, I've seen where those drugs take you. I saw where it took my mother and she never returned. She was lost and she never came back to us. And I don't want that happening to anybody on this planet or to any child uh, or any, yeah. So that's, that's a big part of it for me. And also the financial. People suffer. People stay in relationships because they can't afford to get out of them. That's terrible. They need to make money. So they are autonomous. So they have independence. So they can make their choices from a strong place, not a weak place. And this is very important for women. Wow, that's a huge, huge point. And I think that, um, and I've seen this. I've seen the struggle myself through this business, how women are often put down by their spouses when they get involved in this business because their spouses feel threatened. They feel yeah. threatened that they're losing control and that they might actually get some freedom and some brains and whatever that somehow or some influence outside of them that could take their power away. And obviously that's, uh, that's not a healthy relationship. And, and, uh, and I'm all for moving the cause of humanity forward. And, and, um, and so I, I believe that even things like that that might otherwise on the surface you know be met with all kinds of resistance from you know the the neighbors or the family or the friends um, that just sometimes these things are part of the evolution you're certainly an example of what I'm talking about here you had to go through your own struggle within your family in order for your wings to not be clipped anymore so you could take flight and look what happened to you you became consultant of the year and he listened to you who is this person? You're superhuman. And that's... Very human. <laughs> very, very human. But you know, it's funny, but um, you mentioned the 2012, and I've always been interested in that. And even as a kid, I was interested in Mayan cultures and the Toltec heads of Mexico and the ancient ancient tribal religions. And I, I love all of that. And, and I have a book called The Mayan Calendar, 2012, uh, The Transformation of Consciousness. And in that, that book, book, yeah, it's a great book, Carl Hallaman, uh, Mal yeah. Kalaman's book. And he um, says, at this time, one of the shifts that happens is that no longer will any one soul be able to control another soul. And I remember when I read that, I, I just was like, yeah, that's, you know, that's what I'm about. I want every soul to be sovereign, to know its sovereignty of being, and to have its wings fully, fully unfurled and really fly high because that's what that's what gives us the greatest joy is is evolving and of course it's all about service it's about being a servant leader um, it's really not about yourself at all in a way but it's a paradox it is about you and it's not about you and I love that about it um, but you're right I, I've seen a lot of people put cramps on their spouse or partner not always man to woman but sometimes woman to man or woman to woman or man to man it can be all oh, many dynamics, but it is about being threatened, and they the need to just trust that this is all good. And 
you know, every soul needs to have that autonomy so they can make the right decisions for their evolving life. And hopefully our life is always growing and always evolving and always expanding. And network marketing is a perfect vehicle to show us what expansion looks like. The expansion of your influence. I mean, Mike, your influence in Nikan has been huge. Your, I mean, you know, oh my gosh. I mean, life is precious and you have used your life in a precious manner. And I want to do that because we don't know if we may go tomorrow, you know, it may, we don't know. And uh, we don't want to waste time being asleep here. We want to do, I believe, or I want to do my work. I, not work work. I want to do my, my, my mission, my purpose, and help others do the same. And, and you're like that too. And I think that's why we cry when we're on stage or we cry when we're helping someone on a three-way call because we see their struggle. We see them in a chrysalis and we know they can be a butterfly. We absolutely know it. And we just want to help them along. And, and sometimes it's frustrating because sometimes they're too scared and they don't want to, they don't want to, you know, or they're not ready. And you have to be very patient and just love people and let them grow in their own time. I got to tell you, that's, that's probably the greatest lesson that I had to learn, Julie. I, I was a platinum consultant um, and I was doing really well. And, um, and really, really struggling with why people weren't getting it. How come my group wasn't getting it or they weren't growing as quickly as I did myself or could see them? And, and you know, I, I, at one point in time, I made my career about teaching them what to do. So that's probably the person you met in Japan. It was a person who was very clear about what had to get done. And, and it didn't matter that I maybe had the perfect formula. It wasn't about that. In the end, it was simply about them growing at the speed that they were prepared to grow at. And I tell you, it was the most humbling thing. And I, I remember the moment it actually happened for me where it was just a, an awakening to that reality. And I just remember, you know, the, the, um, my metaphor for this is Jesus on the cross. And he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And it was just transformative for me to understand that they really just don't know what they don't know and um, and you've got to allow them the space that they need to grow because if you put too much pressure then you could squash the chrysalis and if you take a, a razor out and you cut the razor because you want to make it easy for them well they may never learn how to use their wings and strengthen the muscles of their wings so that they can take flight so it's a very delicate balance this thing called leadership Yes, I think absolutely. And I think that uh, the, I had a similar uh, frustration because I was naturally impatient to want to change the world quickly. That was the impatience. <laughs> it was wanting so many more families to have these products. And, you know, I can't say that one is more important than the other. The business and products for me are completely connected. There's no separation. Do you have a favorite product? Oh my gosh, I love them all. I love them all, but I think my most favorite is the sleep system. I, I curl up in that at night and I'm so happy and I have amazing dreams and I feel protected and supported and loved in, in that cocoon. And it's very, very powerful. So I would say that would be the number one. Um, but you know, but yes, you're right about the chrysalis thing. I, I think in the beginning I did, I wanted to move fast. I wanted to transform the world. and you know, I, I, I think I did push people a little fast and they weren't really quite ready. And uh, it was a little like, whoa, you know, what's going on? And so now I just tr do my best to let people grow at, at their own pace. Who am I to say what that right pace is? And, and I'm always looking for people that are, that are ready like I was ready to just expand big. You know, and you never know who that's going to be. But it's kind of like um, I told Joe the other day. I said, Joe, it's like a treasure hunt. It's a treasure hunt. And treasure <laughs> hunts are fun. And you're looking for those special people that are really ready and trust that they'll be attracted to you to, to work together. Because I do believe that a lot of us uh, are, are meant to meet during this lifetime. And maybe we knew each other before and we came back. And there's soul pods that come back together like dolphins. And we come back together to play. 
and I like playing. You know, I like to have fun. I really do. I, I, I never, I don't want this to be drudgery and it real rarely has ever been drudgery for me because the moment it feels like that, I go do something else for a while. I go when, do the when, but the, has it been, has, it, has there been a time where it has appeared to be drudgery for you? I mean, can you connect to that? And then the question that would follow that would be, what were you thinking about? Like, how did it get to be that? Yes. Oh, yes. Because I notice, and I've really been also re revisiting this right now with Tony Robbins, and also I'm reading The Power of Intention by Wayne Dyer right now, which is a fabulous book. And what I realize is it's all about focus. It's where I put my focus. And if I put my focus on people that have left or people that are complaining or whatever, I, I get miserable, you know, because I put my focus on the, the negative. And so all I have to do is shift my focus to the positive, all the beautiful things that are happening. The, the, you know, Boulder has been gorgeous right now. I, I'll go out and take photographs of the trees and, and, and just, I'm happy. I'm just happy being alive. And then I come back and then something else great happens with Nikan, you know. So it's, it's about really understanding the power that we have, the power of focus and clarity and keeping focused on what, what is already so, which we're already blessed, we really are. We're already, see, that's the big thing. I think that most people, and including me too, we don't always get how blessed we are. If we really understood how blessed we are, that we really are so loved and beloved, we would know we already have everything we need. Everything in this moment, we have everything. There's nothing missing. And if we could live from that every moment, really in this now, that there's nothing missing in this now, there's air, there's water, there's warmth, there's clothing, there's beauty, there's love, there's friendship, there's the glory, and that we are part of that and loved, we wouldn't suffer so. And from that, we would be able to create more of that blessedness in our world. And that's really what I want to do is help you know, co-create heaven on earth. I know that's a big goal, but that's what I came to do, and I think well, that's what you came to do. You know, if there was, if there were more people, Julie, who adopted this, and 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 I think what you're talking about is actually a huge leap of faith for a lot of people. But then, that's what it's all about, isn't it? You know, um, is to operate from faith and to understand that. Um, you know, what if what you're saying is so? What if everything you just described is in fact the truth? And it's our perception that denies us the experience of that truth because we're not living it in our consciousness. In fact, I'm sure you've read a number of the kind of books that I've read. Neville Goddard, for instance, is the one I mentioned in the last call, where he talks about walking in your consciousness and assume, make, uh, assume it. The, the, the role, adopt and assume the role, um, walk in that assumption and you will begin and end. He also talks about denying what your senses perceive because those are simply the manifestation of the previous assumptions that you've held in your consciousness. So deny what you see with your eyes and your senses perceive, walk in the assumption of the person you choose to be and then it will harden into form. It will yes. become what you experience and it sounds to me like that's your MO because I've been thinking about asking you this question and sort of holding off we've only got about four minutes left and that is Julie do you follow a process I mean do you have like a, a presentation that you like to use and and you know is there a methodology to your madness or and I, I believe there probably is and maybe you can tell me but I'm sure the first where you're coming from is First and foremost, the, the, the major part of the, it's 99% of the process is the attitude from where you're coming from, the expectation from where you're coming from, the walking in the assumption of the success and the joy and the love that you want to see in the world. And from there, you see it. It begins to manifest in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. That is, that is exactly. In fact, when you said, "Is uh, what kind of process do you have?" I, what my first thought was was, well, the moment I wake up, is I just say thank you, 
and I just send my love to the universe and to everything. And then I get up and I'll sing songs like Kirtan songs. I'll put them on and I'll just sing along with them. And uh, and then I'll go do yoga or I'll go work out because I work out every day because I think the physical body is a temple. And I go work out because I want to honor the temple and I eat really good food because I want to honor the temple. And uh, and then, you know, when it comes to Nikan, I'm already in a great space because I've already visualized this light coming and wrapping up this planet like like a mother wrapping a baby up in light, you know, with her arms. Was, and, was it always like this? I mean, like, did you have tools to help you in this process through the years? Yes, yes. I've learned a lot of things to help me because, of course, the, the, the ego has wounding. We're all wounded. I mean, we're all broken in different ways. I think we've all had our heart broken in different ways. And so it's learning how to, it's, it's like I'm peeling the onion or something. It's like I learned Psyche K and how to do that with, with my team, with anyone actually who wants it, and with myself to release all patterns, change subconscious thinking. Um, I read a lot of beautiful books. I don't watch television. I don't get into all the negativity around politics or anything. I am not willing to go to that low vibration. It's not where I want to live my life. My life is precious, and I choose to live it as preciously as I can. And um, so, yeah, I do very specific things physically, mentally, uh, emotionally, re emotional release work. I've done a lot of that. In fact, right after winning the Consultant of the Year Award, I thought I have some big emotional release work to do. And I went and did three months of solid emotional release work about my childhood. And uh, that was fantastically clearing. And that because emotions take up space in the body and it holds you down. And when you release them and let go and come to terms with what's happened in your life, then you can move forward and be lighter and be more of the spirit being that you really are become your true self. So yeah, I do, I do a lot. I write, I go to dream group. I, um, and when I do Nikan, I just try to help people. I don't have a specific line or anything to say to people. I just feel like the ones who have the ears to hear and the eyes to see and the heart to know the truth, they will know, they will know the truth. And I just present it in a, just to make it safe, just, just to be safe for them. Wow. And on that note, I'm going to say, Julie, Tara, 2012 Consultant of the Year, Royal Diamond, amazing human being. Thank you so much for being on this presentation, this show with me tonight. Uh, any last word? Thank you, Mike. You're just such a pleasure to work with. I feel blessed to know you and blessed to work with you and with so many other beautiful beings like yourself in Niken. I mean, it is an extraordinary family. And just, um, you guys, just uh, expect miracles, expect success, expect to be loved, expect it all to come to you. Yes, go do the work, of course, but it's not really work. It's just loving people and helping them. Just go help more people. It will all work out, I promise. Fantastic. Wow. Thank you so, so much. And thank you for those who've uh, submitted their questions through Twitter. And um, I'd like to just remind you that the next show, Hanging Out with Mike DiMuccio, is going to be on November the 13th. That'll be t the first Tuesday, excuse me, the second Tuesday of November. Uh, I look forward to seeing everyone at the Niken Convention and coming back to you with some incredible news. Very, very excited about that. And uh, just as um, a reminder, you know, between now and then, Enjoy every precious moment. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye.